Here's a quick rundown on inverse functions. So a lot of times you're gonna be given a function such as this one, and then asked to find the inverse. The first step I like to do is replace the f of x on the left side with a y. The next step is to swap the x's and y's between both sides. Now we just have to use some fancy algebra to rearrange things and solve for our new y, which in this case gets us y equals x minus two, all over five. The last step to make sure you don't lose any points is to replace this y with an f to the negative one of x, which is the inverse, and you're done. So inverse functions are basically the uno reverse of regular functions. With regular functions, you take an input x, plug it in, and get an output f of x, which is also usually called y. If we thought of our function as a freezer, we could consider the input x to be the water and the output y to be the ice. Inverse functions do the opposite and take y as the input and then output the original x that created them. Using our same analogy, the inverse function would now be an oven, which took the ice, y, as the input, and the output would be the original water, x. To illustrate this in fancy math language, let's consider a function f of t is equal to c, which describes the number of crumbs c left on the table after eating for t minutes. In this case, the input to our function is the minutes we ate, t, and the output is the number of crumbs left, c. So if we saw the math expression f of five is equal to 20, this translates IRL to eating for five minutes leaves 20 crumbs on the table. But what if we wanted to know how many minutes we ate based on the number of crumbs left on the table? For this, we would need the inverse function, f inverse of c is equal to t, which takes the number of crumbs, c, as the input and gives the time spent eating, t, as the output. In this case, f inverse of 20 would be equal to five, which translates IRL to, if there are 20 crumbs left on the table, then we must have been eating for five minutes. Another way to think about inverse functions is like an operator that cancels out regular functions. Let's take this math expression for example, f of x is equal to y, which makes sense because an input x to the regular function f of x produces an output y. Now, if we were to operate the inverse function on both sides, the inverse function on the left will cancel out the regular function to free the x on the left, while the inverse function on the right will trap the y on the right. This gives us f inverse of y is equal to x, which makes sense because now the input y to the inverse function produces the original value of x as the output. And there you have it. That's how to understand inverse functions. Nice.